Hi, everybody. My name is Simon Bird. Welcome to my presentation. We're going to be taking uh, approximately 20 minutes of your time. The timer has been set, and here we go. Just so he, um, you can definitely check out your other presentations, and I don't take up too much of your time. Here we go. Share. I hope everybody has seen the presentation. And of course, the title being a double edged sword. Is social media merely a distraction or does it have a meaningful role in indigenous language revitalization? A little bit by way of introduction, who I am. I am a father of two, a spouse to one from Northeast Saskatchewan in Canada, doctoral student at the University of Victoria. I'm a school administrator. Right now I work as a director of education for four schools on a First Nation. I'm a content creator and the administrator of a Facebook group called Cree Simon Says. And I teach the language. I'm a fluent speaker. Hence, my interest in the subject. And the purpose of this very paper is to explore social media in relation to its use in ILR. Major questions throughout my presentation is social media an effective tool for ILR? What are the limitations of utilizing social media when it comes to teaching indigenous languages? What precautions should be taken when using social media for indigenous language revitalization? Here we go. Context. Through a search of academic journals, which includes technology, enhanced language learning, and educational technology, there are very few, I added the very in there, public uh, publications that critically examines the integration of technology in Indigenous languages. Gala is 2016. I would argue that not much has changed by way of research. And if you know of an article, please email me. CreeSimonBird at gmail.com. Let me know, because I'm doing my doctoral on this, and I'm just starting my journey. The great disconnection when it comes to Indigenous languages, colonization. Okay, we've all seen the images, assimilation through residential schools, day schools, industrial schools. We've all experienced and have witnessed some form of aggressive legislation that allows governments to put the Indian in a place where they, fa they are fast-tracked to lose their language, their identity, and who they are as a people. Indigenous people and technology. Then, back then, historically, Western modern forms of science and technology have been used to colonize and dominate Indigenous communities. This legacy of Western technological forms continues to be present in Indian country. And some scholars have suggested that technology and techno technology-based efforts in indigenous communities are either implicitly or explicitly uh, hegemonic functions, making everybody the same. I would argue that it's gonna happen. This is my two cents. This is already happening to a degree. Okay, that's all I will say about this quote. And the next one, indeed, technology creates a double-edged sword promoting both negative and positive challenges for, and therefore requiring ethical awareness, for instance, due to the increase of technology use amongst Native youth, cultural uh, teaching and oral traditions have decreased all right, this was back in 2001. That's 20 years ago. A lot of these kids that were not paying attention to the elders are wishing that they had done so today because those elders are now gone. And now what do we do now? Is it too late? You know, how, what, 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 what role can technology play if, if it distracted us from our elders? Today, you know, until the advent of the internet, hence virtually uh, uh, presenting here and pre-recording, and hopefully we get to meet uh, during the conference live, um, Indigenous people did not have the opportunity to come across their language in a foreign land or digital domain. OSNs, online social networks, burst onto the global scene around seven years ago. 
All right, you do the math. This was uh, written in 2013, um, Indigenous Language Revitalization, uh, a book that I can um, you can check out towards the end of the presentation. So again, we're still here. You know, some of these types of platforms have been have been erased. Uh, we don't no, no longer have Bebo, High Five. Um, you know, MySpace, uh, it's all taken over by other newer, uh, more even more fast paced uh, types of social media. And the uh, context, uh, research uh, done on virtual learning or virtual teaching uh, states that face to face teaching of English as a second language experience does not automatically re result in the development of expertise, right? Knowledge of learners and learning engagement in critical reflection, access to past experiences, informed lesson planning and, uh, and, and having active student involvement. Those can all be transferred what we're doing now virtually through social media to a degree. But the thing is this face-to-face -face stuff, you know, that nothing can replace it. And we've all had those teachers, you know, we would rather not be in the classroom because they're not teaching us what we really need to connect with anyway. And I'm telling you that social media can actually replace those, those types of teachers that really didn't have the right stuff to begin with. I'm just saying, you've seen it. Context, research done in ILR in contemporary society by providing a non-judgmental environment for learners to actively engage in the language without pressure of being grammatically correct. That is one of the things you need to look out for in social media. Just like, just like in person, you know, the, the teacher that, you know, you, the classroom that you fell asleep in, the same thing can apply in social media. Okay? You have to have an active, engaging learning environment. Again, some of the things that we draw upon in, 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 in research, uh, Reiner and Tennant, 1995, outlined five principles that you know, are, can be applied for effective language teaching programs, is putting primary emphasis on communication and not grammar. That can be done on social media. I've seen it happen. I do it myself. Using context that is real or at least realistic. Processing content of high interest to the learner. That's all about social media, high interest. It's a very, it can be very competitive and you have to be, you know, up your game. You have to be engaging. Adjusting the, the pace of instruction to the student's progress. Definitely happens in every classroom, virtual or not. Correcting students through modeling. This can be tougher. It takes skill. Let's, let's be patient about this part. You know, social media, you can't really, you're just kind of providing the content and sending it out. If you have, uh, don't have the time, and if they don't ask questions, you might be sending out something and a person uh, may not quite understand it and maybe do some mispronouncing. We'll get that to, uh, we'll get to that point later. And here we are. Um, here's myself teaching via social media, using my phone. Everything that I do is on my phone, by the way. As content creator of Cree Simon says on Facebook groups with over 20,000 people, I've learned that um, some of these uh, principles of effective teaching can be applied. Okay. Uh, it provides a safe community. Yes, I delete and I have blocked people because they go there and they, they, they shame other people for trying to speak the language or they, they get on a, a soapbox and, you know, uh, um, the, the, the people that are really don't have any other way of connecting because they might be on the other side of the world, um, you know, are embarrassed or afraid to, to share or afraid to speak. Just, just by way of numbers here, uh, everybody always clicks with numbers. Uh, this is uh, in the last 60 days, we've had uh, over a thousand people join since December uh, 20. And here we are, uh, today is February 11. So again, put it in perspective, we have over 20,000 people. Personal observations again, as content creator, 
and something that I'm that I'm that I'm uh, hoping to share in my research is that you know there's a lot of these points that can uh, you know be taught in person, but definitely a must in social media. It has to be bite sized It has to be digestible. The information and content has to be engaging. There has to be there has to be a way of seamless learning. People that go on social media are, are not there to to really um, you know uh, exercise their brain. Uh, it's more of a casual, fun-loving atmosphere. Um, seamless learning. Again, the spelling or grammar is not as necessary. Okay, not as necessary as long as there's an attempt to do it. You know, uh, creating a dialogue. That's exactly that's exactly one of the one of the primary things we all need to do in indigenous language revitalization, as Kirkness put, uh, you know, uh, put it. <clears throat> it is only through passing on the language from parent to child that our language can truly survive. And as content creator, I've seen this happen. You know, uh, people are starting to to, to talk uh, uh, to each other within the house by what I'm sharing. You know, uh, building a community of learners, of like-minded like members, although this will require consistent monitoring until members themselves start to monitor um, your expectations in, in, a, in a group, in a Facebook group, in a social media channel. Um, that's why I have it as private, but people hear about it. I don't advertise it, but people by word of mouth. You know, as Indigenous people, it's always by word of mouth. And because we realize that in order to save or to exercise, to grow our language, we need a large population. And that's all I do in social media is a content creator. I'm an, a little bit more of an igniter. All the teaching happens for the, in the members themselves and the conversation that carries on elsewhere. Limitations using social media, there are quite a bit. The very things that make them success are limitations. It's very fast paced. It can be very, very crowded. There's a lot of pressure to be the, the, you know, the most entertaining, but as long as you maintain quality content very consistently, you should be able to manage a, uh, a good, uh, you know, quote unquote following with them, uh, consistent members being engaged and active and being interested in, in what you're providing. Engaging learners and follow and fellow speakers is a balancing act. You know, sometimes you don't know exactly who's on the other side. And if the lessons are too easy, those that speak the language are they're not going to be challenged. They're, they're going to leave the group. And if the content is too difficult, the learners themselves are going to lose interest. So you have to mix it up and never too, too much, never too much. All right. Next one. You know, before we move on, there is a risk that some learners will repeat and repost phrases without fully understanding the, the complete context of what exactly the words that they're sharing. This I see as a teachable moment. And it's going to happen in person anyway. In social media, it might ha happen more frequently. But again, that is one of the risks we take. The precautions are should be taken when you know using social media for indigenous language revitalization is the access to the language so freely, and there is there can be cultural appropriation. In addition to the colonization of indigenous peoples, globalization has altered how information and knowledge are accessed, uh, exchanged, and engaged with. And now, before you say anything about you know, I've seen this. This was in 2018, uh, written by Gala, when she talked about uh, technology. It is my mistake. I should have put, um, you know, uh, in, but I did reference her in the other quotes. This is not my words. These are Gala, Candice Gala's words right here. In closing, I do want to say that community-based language revitalization efforts have the potential to bring together youth who are comfortable with digital technology as users and producers and elders who are um, language and cultural uh, knowledge holders uh, to uh, work collaboratively. On, on, on language initiatives and projects and thus allowing an intergenerational exchange of ideas, skills and learning opportunities. This is a quotation I was talking about uh, from my uh, previous quote. Methodologies that I use, 
participant observational, you know, as an administrator content, I do this six o'clock in the morning, spend anywhere from a half an hour to four to five minutes every morning, posting five or six things, just so it can create, uh, um, you know, content, uh, um, just dialogue, you know, interest. And throughout the day, I, I, I check on it every once in a while. I do have a full-time job, but I've, I think I've, I've figured out a way because, check this out, the algorithms on your own personal social media will actually uh, bring the latest content that you have on your, uh, on your uh, notifications, all right? So if I post uh, yesterday and you're only checking your Facebook now, there's probably a whole lot of other things in there that you've liked before or that you're following that are going to go and float at the very top of your, of your uh, social media news feed. And that's what I try to do. The, the recipe is try to try to be consistent every single morning by six o'clock. If you have five or six posts, the chances of that hitting the very thing um, on your notifications when you first open your phone, when you're laying in bed, when you're checking this out, when you're checking that out, guess what? That's all a part of engagement. Context <clears throat> inquiries, of course, uh, exploring um, uh, other research done in computer assisted language learning or utilizing technology in related field of ILR. Literature review, that's something that I'm currently doing with my doctorate and the information out there regarding technology in general is fascinating and I'm, and I'm seeing the connections. Unstructured interviews. I do get once in a while people that are interested in share more information about how social media has helped them advance and uh, their, their own language journey. And those kinds of stories go a very long way for somebody that may not see, um, you know, uh, the, the students, quote unquote students on a daily basis. So share those information. And during my um, of course, my, uh, my, my doctorate studies that I will be doing. And that's exactly, that's exactly what I hope to do is I hope to um, really get a, a, a deeper look at the learning journey of the social media members themselves. And I do, I already have an interest. Um, I, I posted that up and uh, there's been some healthy feedback of people that want to share. And uh, research questions is another thing. That's something that I'll need some guidance on. Again, if you're interested, email me, creesimonbird at gmail.com, unsolicited, uh, you know, advice towards what I'm doing. Maybe you have some re resources that you can help me out. Please, it's going to be welcome. Uh, the references that I talked about are right here. I'm just going to move my face to the left here, and hopefully you can get a good glance, maybe take a snapshot of whatever is up there. And again, I do want to say thank you very much to everybody that have participated. And look at this. We have two minutes to spare. Going back to my, you know, I might have talked too fast. I don't know, but this is social media. Um, my presentation is very much, very much impacted or influenced in what I do. And I just, I just love the fact that, you know, we can connect from, you know, all the way here in LaRange, Saskatchewan with people all over the world and Treaty, uh, Treaty 6 territory, uh, limitations, there's definitely limitations and there's benefits. You know, this is through personal observation. It has to be bite-sized, digestible, and engaging, seamless as possible. Think of <clears throat> Sesame Street. You know, in Canada, we had the Mr. Dress-Up. I right, think of what they did as kids. Well, I was a kid. What they did when I was a kid is they, you know, on PBS or on CBC here in Saskatchewan, they freely had fun, engaging content for kids when we didn't have any other channel except the maybe two or three and we're learning this on Saturday mornings. I think there's, you know, that kind of consistency, you know, every, everything that we uh, look forward to, uh, digestible, you know, you know, uh, um, pronunciation, uh, the small spellings, it, it's just there to, to really plant a seed and spark that small fire. And where it goes later, it really is up to the learners where it goes, it really is up to the learners. It might go to something else, it might stay there, but it, whatever it's gonna happen, a lot of our social media content provided will eventually stay 
with the person if they're serious about what they're learning. So with that said, again, my name is Simon Bird. And I, I, I just I just want to say uh, mahalo. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and enjoy the rest of your uh, conference. Check out, check out uh, hashtag Cree Simon Bird, uh, hashtag Cree Simon Says on, on Facebook, and you'll get to know exactly what I'm talking about. Have a nice day, everybody.